Hello everyone, I'm Steve Venner, G0TAN, and welcome to another Martin Lynch product uh, videos. Uh, today I'm going to uh, introduce you to the FTDX101D. Here's one that I uh, sort of prepared earlier, if you like. Um, I'm going to switch it on, see what it's like, see, see what it happens when you power it up. Um, this particular video is going to be done slightly different to our other ones. We're going to do a, a standard video today in that I'm going to show you the, the front panel, the switches, the knobs, the controls and what they do, the menu system, things like that. A uh, quick picture of what's on the back so that you can uh, see what's available to you. And then what we're going to, we thought we'd try and do, we're going to go to a secret location somewhere nearby and we're actually going to put the radio on air. We're going to try and live stream that if, uh, if at all possible. But uh, let's see how that goes. But for now, so this is the radio that I want to talk about today. Um, as with uh, all radios, when you buy a new one, um, I always recommend the first thing you do when you get it uh, home, get it out of the box, power, connect it up to your power supply, is do a full factory reset. And on this radio, uh, on Yaesu radios, it's pretty much the same way of doing it uh, each time. You just basically hold the fast and lock buttons in, power the radio on. And... Um, away it starts up so hopefully uh, we've got a little bit of um, an antenna in the back there not too much it's just a simple wire antenna just dangling out the um, the window just to see if you can see so you can see the the uh, spectrum display and such like so i'm going to turn that off for now we don't need to don't need to worry about the noise um, one thing i would say about this particular radio um, with the asu products because they, they enter a global market, um, when you get one for the UK market, um, it will not have the five megahertz band allocation enabled, and it will not have the uh, four meter or 70 meg band allocation enabled. Uh, but this radio does do it. But when you get it, you should have uh, a little uh, leaflet, something like that, that tells you how to enable it. It, it goes across, it's, this, this particular leaflet covers uh, multiple, uh, mul multiple radios, sorry. Um, so let's have a quick go. What does it say on there? I'm going to put my glasses on, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry about this. Uh, so it says the first thing is to turn the transceiver off. Okay, so we tur turn that off. And it says you press and hold the function and mode buttons. So hold those two in and power the radio on. And then we should see that the RX light just here is flashing uh, half a second on, half a second off. If I momentarily press the mode button again, it now slows down to about one second on, one second off, something like that. Now if we press and hold the mode button, it should actually do a, a reset. Now, as far as you're concerned, um, nothing probably much has actually happened, uh, but it has. Um, so let's go to the 5 meg band, for, ins for instance, on main. So we press the 5 meg band, we're here. Uh, our allocation, according to the sheet, is 5.25 megs to 5.40 uh, something or other. As I say, I haven't got my glasses on, so if you bear with me. So if we want to, we can do this very quickly. Just go in here, so if we go there, touch the, l the, the, the hertz button on the frequency band, and we go in 5.25. Uh, two, five, enter, 5.25 megs. If we go slightly low on there and if I press the mock switch, you'll see the TX indicator um, flashing so you can't operate outside the band. Go inside, 5.25, press the mox button, boom, it's on steady. So now we know that's enabled. And we can do the same for the 70 meg band. So if we touch the, uh, the hertz, part of the frequency and we go to 70 enter 70 megs if I go down a little bit below that to press the mox button again it flashes to say we can't transmit outside of the band go up into the 70 meg band bump away we go right so I'm not going to do too much of that because we don't have a real antenna on the back so that's that's probably the first thing that you might want to do um, hopefully that will that will help say so you should get one of these in the box um, if not, you can download it from the, our website um, if you go and search for the FTDX101D. Yeah, so there should be a link there. The other thing that I would really, really, really um, encourage you to do when you get a, uh, a radio like this, a superb radio, 
it's obviously fairly uh, complex. There's a lot of features, a lot of functionality. Um, do spend some time looking at the manual. There's a lot of information on there that will help you get the best out of the radio. Um, I've only been playing with this probably, I would say, for about four or five hours. Um, some of the things that I wasn't too sure of, I've already had to go to the manual. It's, it's, there, there are a lot of things in there that are not immediately straightforward. Like, for instance, doing the uh, frequency, if I wanted to change frequency, apart from doing the band buttons along here, um, I thought, well, how can you enter the, the, the frequency? But when you know how to do it, so it took me a few, few minutes to try and think, well, uh, where is it? Um, but once you know, touch that, and we go, let's go 14 megs. There, it's, it's so, so simple. So, so what I'm going to do now is stop what I'm doing, come back in a few seconds. I'm going to have the picture on the rear of the radio, uh, sorry, have the camera on the rear of the radio and we go over some of the connectors and things. So bear with me for a second and uh, I will see you very shortly. Thank you. Okay, as you can see now, I've turned the radio around. Um, so we're just going to go over some of the connectors on the back panel so you can see what they're like. Most of this information is actually given again in the manual, but uh, just to uh, whet your appetite, so to speak, let's see what we've got on the back here. So the first thing that you can see here is huge, huge fan. Um, and I suspect that uh, one reason it's so big is because it's, uh, when it's operating, it's actually running quite slowly. So it keeps the radio nice and cool, but without actually causing too much noise. Uh, you can get some uh, small radios and, and the like that um, when the fan comes on, it's like a hurricane taking off and things like that. So I think that's the reason why they've done that one. It's a beautiful fan. Uh, keep the radio nice and cool under lots of hours of uh, contesting and things like that. Uh, so after the fan, we've got three antenna ports, uh, two dedicated... Um, transmit receive ones and the third one you can either configure as a third transmit receive um, antenna port or a dedicated receive antenna port. Uh, we then have up here we have the external speaker sockets you've got A and B and it depends on how you uh, what you insert in there as to what actually comes out. There are actually three and a half mil mono plugs that you insert in there um, a is normally the main band audio, B is the sub band audio. But if you only put um, one plug into the A socket, you'll get the audio from both A and B at the same time. Um, there is a little matrix in here that tells you, in the, in the user manual, that tells you how to, uh, what, what you're likely to hear out of it. Um, it's uh, one of these IntelliSense type of. Um, plugs and sockets so that when you, like on your PC, when you plug something in, it detects that you've done something and it configures the audio accordingly. Okay, so three and a half mil mono in there. Uh, standard quarter inch jack on there, that's stereo. Uh, again, uh, you can it, stick a straight key in here, the same on the front panel, which we'll talk about in a short while. Uh, if you want to put a straight key in, you wire it to the ground point on the plug and the tip. If you want to use a paddle, you use a ground point and then dots and dashes on the appropriate part of the stereo plug. Okay, uh, you have an AF out here um, if you want to use an external audio uh, processing device, if you want a, a better word. You have a remote socket. What does that do for us? Um, oh, that's if you're going to use the um, optional FH2 remote keypad, so you know if you're contesting. Um, you can program various memories and um, key sequences, voice sequences, things like that. Uh, the next one is the standard Yaesu RITI data port. You can get all the RITI and data signals out of there, although this does do decoding and sending. Uh, so we'll talk about the front panel in a minute. Uh, the meter socket on the back is if you want to buy uh, purchase or, or make your own um, external um, um, receive signal strength meter or whatever you power power meter. It's basically a stereo plug again that you put on there. Common point is the ground and then the main and sub signal strengths are on each of the appropriate part of the um, stereo plug. We have an external ALC RCA phono socket here that's for uh, if you're running linear amplifiers. USB port here for connecting to uh, your computer. 
if you want to uh, run any remote control software like Ham Radio Deluxe, something like that. Um, you then have also, if you're not using USB, you can use the standard RS-232 socket here. So that's all good. All good. Um, if you're running a linear, um, something like the VL1000, uh, the Quadra, then you have the standard Yaesu um, band data port just here. Uh, that connects straight direct with the appropriate cables to, to the Quadra. Uh, a generic accessory port in here, which, um, as I say, the details are on there. You've got various datas and clocks, um, all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful things on there, so don't worry about that too much, um, unless you're into that sort of thing. Um, TX ground, again, for control of linear. An external PTT line, so if you've got your contesting, you potentially have a laptop connected to it and you can connect your foot switch to the PTT line. If you have any accessories that require a 13.8 volts line, that can supply up to about 200 milliamps. Okay, and then we have the tuner socket, if you want to use the, which one does they use? Here is the FC40 uh, tuner socket. And then you have the DVI connector for an external display, which I'll connect up in a short while in the next section. And then it finally leaves your grounding point, common on all radios, your four pin DC in socket, the RX out if you want to use an external receiver. Okay, for, and this one is for the main, uh, main receiver on here and the IF out, which is for the main, and that is 14, that's, where is it, uh, IF out, IF out, 9.005 megahertz comes out of there, so you can play about with that. And those two are duplicate mirrored over here, you've got the RX out of the sub-receiver, and the IF out for the sub-receiver, slightly different frequency, and that is 8.9 megahertz. So that's the, the basic um, back panel that you see, so it's not too cluttered, uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple to use. So, okay, now what I'm going to do is turn the radio back round and show you some of the controls on the front panel. Um, I've turned the radio around again, as you can see here. Um, I've got it all connected up at the back. We've got that silly little wire antenna in the back. Um, I'm going to go over some of the, uh, the basic controls on the front, and you, uh, once I've done that, we'll have a little pause again, and I'll go over some of the menu systems, because it's a fairly, as you can imagine, on a radio... Um, of this, I wouldn't say complexity, but the the ability, if you like, it's going to have um, a fairly extensive menu system. So we just go over some of the basic um, features and functions of that. Uh, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do, though, um, you might hopefully you can see in the background there, uh, we do have a monitor connected, but by default it's not enabled. So you're going to have to go into the menu system. Um, and that's fairly straightforward. There's a function button on the front panel here. We'll do that. And down here, there's a soft touch button uh, called display settings. And you look for external monitor. And at the moment, it's, it's off by default. Anything that's yellow is default uh, um, parameter. Then you touch that on. And then you have two sizes. We have 800 uh, by 480 or 800 by 600. I think ours looks better in 800 by 600. So there we have it. Okay, so that might help you a little bit when we come to do all the features and functionality. Right, so again, what I'm going to, uh, I was going to say I'll do a reset, but I'm not going to do that now because I'll lose my monitor again. So this is, um, it's quite, for me, it's quite actually an interesting radio. Um, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, I, I was really uh, sort of taken aback. I thought it's really, uh, it's a beautiful radio, beautiful looking thing. I saw it in real life up at the RSGB convention and I wasn't too sure about it. I thought it looked a bit, a little bit too glitzy for me, a little bit too, lots of lights and um, things like a bit Las Vegas, I call it. Um, but as I said earlier, I've been playing with the radio probably on and off over a couple of days, probably for about a total of about four hours so far. And there are certain things that I didn't think I would like. I've actually grown to like them very much and I'm sort of, if you go into normal mode like other radios uh, that are out there, you think, no, I wish they could do the same thing as this. And the, the main thing that, say the first thing that struck me was this uh, 3D waterfall display. I thought, no, nah, you don't really need that. Uh, but what I've been doing is um, 
switching it off you know because you can actually turn turn the 3d off like that you go to a standard waterfall you can expand it up so it takes up more of the screen and i'm thinking no 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 i actually quite like the 3d waterfall now so um, i'm going to put that back on just for now but we, we go through all this functionality in a minute and so you can see it so uh, we've got that expanded so let me just turn the volume down on that in case that's annoying so just just basically noise at the moment um, when it comes once you do a reset the you get basically both receivers enabled uh, you get them both on seven megs so if i just do that for instance so we're both now on on seven megs that's that's quite easy to do um <coughs> just to get, quickly go over the controls okay and then i go into a little bit more depth on some of them so the first one is obviously the power button. You've seen that we do that a few times now. You've got two USB ports on the front, both for your mouse and your keyboard, keypad if you're doing RITI and things like that. You have a duplicate key, uh, again, quarter inch uh, on the front stereo. Uh, depends whether you want to do straight key or um, paddle, as I said earlier. Uh, phone socket, again, quarter inch stereo. So you can get the same thing. You can have the sub receiver in one ear and the uh, sorry, main receiver one ear, sub receiver in the other and so on. You have the microphone socket, standard uh, eight pin microphone connector, Jesu do it. Um, what they have provided in the box is a new microphone now. Um, this one's got slightly more functionality than the old ones. It's called an SSM-75G. It's got the four programmable buttons on the front, a mute button and the, the down and up plus a PTT. So slightly different microphone. Um, I did play about with it at the weekend and I used my standard MD100 no problems whatsoever. So ignoring the display for a second, um, what you have got on here is uh, a tune button. It does have an internal tuner. Uh, you have the Vox, which is voice operation, uh, Mox, manual operation, uh, zoom in and spot for when you're doing CW. Uh, the display button changes the display, uh, the actual display style if you like we go on to that in a little bit more i've already um and then you've got the sub menu uh sorry that's the not the sub menu it is the scope menu okay so there's various parameters you can set up there for specifically for the scope and then you saw me earlier if you press the function cut uh, button you get all the menu options that are around at the moment that are available to you so let's go um, along the top, shall we? Because I think that's probably a slightly better, more interesting thing to look at. These are all of your band um, bands here. So you go from 1.8, 3.55, and so on, up to the 70 meg stroke general receiver. And depending on which of whether you're on main or whether you're on sub, you get the what the appropriate one selected. At the moment, just it's like diver diverting here to these buttons. Uh, you have the main receiver there and you have the sub receiver here. So you can swap between the two as, as far as entering frequencies and things are concerned. So if I do that, you see it goes blue and you can see now that the waterfall actually says it's sub, sub and so on. Um, and then if I was to change the band for sub, if I do that, you will see that the blue one is lit up. The way this works is that the main receiver is all in white and the sub receiver is all in blue. And they've done that um, if you've got multiple controls, for instance, you've got the shift and width over here, that is blue for the sub. Down the bottom, it's uh, in white, but the same thing, sh uh, shift and width. You've got the noise blanker, uh, dynamic noise reduction, and dynamic notch filter, and so on. But so this, and again, it's duplicated over here for the notch and contour, notch and contour. Blue is for the sub receiver, white is for the main. So let's go back for a second. So the same thing up here. All the ones along the top, we can see it's blue. So the sub receiver is on, on 14 megs, just as I show here. The lower set of LEDs, the white ones, they're on seven for the main receiver, which is over here. Now, one thing that you might be able to see, hopefully you can see on here, is that along the top of each of these band buttons, there is another LED which actually glows um, amber. Um, if I was to say, right, I'm gonna press and hold the seven meg button, you see it lights up uh, in amber. If I press and hold the 14 meg button, 
it lights up and stays in amber. If I do 28 megs, it's 20. That's to allow, maybe if you're running in like a contest station or something like that, um, or in, yeah, contest station, you know which bands you can actually operate on, which bands may be uh, such that have actually antennas connected. You know, it's just a reminder to the operator. It's quite a neat little feature that. So, so basically it changed bands. So you want to get main receiver, want to go 3.5, uh, sub receiver I want to go 21 something like that so it, it's fairly straightforward to do and if you wanted to you can sort of swap over um, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute let's, let's, let's do the rest of these things first let's try and do it in some sort of organized way if I can so um, I'll go back to both on 14 just for that, uh, that right? sorry 14 there we go so we're both on 14 now that's good excellent right so what else have we got here so just to the right of the display, um, we have a few buttons here. Um, you've got two dedicated buttons for doing CW and one for doing SSB. Um, so if I press that, we're going to go straight into CW upper mode. If you want to go to the other side, you press it again, you go CW lower mode. Uh, same with SSB, you can go SSB. Um, lower sideband, upper sideband, lower sideband, and so on. So we're in 14 megs, so uh, upper sideband. If you want to do other modes, um, you've got the dedicated mode button. If you press it once, it just takes you into RTTY, lower sideband, for whatever reason. Um, it doesn't, you can do that umpteen times, it doesn't do anything, it just stays on the lower. If you want to change it to upper, you can press and hold the mode button, and now you'll see that you've got all the different modes that you can select anyway. So lower sideband, upper sideband, CW lower, FM, FM narrow, digital FM, data FM, PSK, RITI, and, and so on. So we go go back to upper sideband. Um, the screen is touchscreen as well, if you hadn't uh, already guessed that. You, besides the dedicated buttons, the physical buttons along here, um, you do have some soft touch buttons along the screen and they, they change depending on what, what mode and stuff you're in. Okay, um, one thing I didn't mention, there is a little SD card slot just here. That is for uh, SD card, obviously, um, and you can store your various parameters, messages, uh, if you're doing contesting again, um, any data, any configuration data, things like that. So. Uh, any any specific settings and you can recall them. if you have to do a reset you can then recall them back okay so that's the mode buttons along there uh, you have the break in if you're doing um, Morse code so press it and uh, it turns it on and turns it off I can't actually see it that's because we're not in CW mode are we if I do that um, monitor the monitor button comes on so you can hear if you're sending Morse code you could hear that and if I do break in now does that work uh, still can't see it. it's got to be there somewhere I know it has uh, I'll find that out later don't worry uh, haven't quite worked that one out yet and I don't want to sort of stop the video just to go and have a look in the handbook as I say it's all fairly new to me so let's let's see how we get on um, I'll work it out don't worry then we have the multi button this one does a myriad of things uh, depending on what you've got it set to so by default um, if you press it on, you can see the level is set to plus 5 dBs. Ooh, that whoop de doo um, What that means is that's actually the threat. Oops, get the right knob there, Steve. Uh, the, um, it's to do with the noise, the, the reference level. If I turn it right down, you can see the waterfall display. I can turn it right down and you don't get any, anything on there. Okay, and then if I start turning up a little bit, you can see the noise coming on the background. You set that to what you what you feel like. What's what's comfortable to, for you? Okay, that's good. So by default, it is uh, plus five dBs. It's actually quite noisy because the bands are quite noisy on that stupid bit of wire. Okay, um, then we have some simple ones up here. Uh, we have the sync button. That's if you touch that. Um, if I turn the main VFO knob, you'll see both the main and the sub tuned together. It's lock, locking them together. Uh, if you had them, say, on different bands, so if we had the sub on, say, 7 mix, just, just for example, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Right, one thing you can do, again, with the sync button there, I can now tune both frequencies together. Hopefully you can see this okay. Hopefully my hand's not in the way, actually, I've just realised. Um, I'll try and do this. It's, uh, bit embarrassing if it was I do apologize 
Um, let's, let's do that. Um, so you can see the two moving together as I tune. Um, if you press and hold the sync button, the two receivers sync, uh, go permanently synced up to exactly the same frequency. Okay, and the same mode as well. So that's the sync. Um, let's go on to split frequency. That's pretty straightforward, stand on most radios. You do that, you'll see that the TX LED over here is now moved to the sub receiver. And you can see on this display that the frequency on the sub receiver is now turned red, indicating that when you key up, you're going to be transmitting on that. So you can set that up if you're working split, you know, obviously the receive is on the main receiver and when you transmit, you're going to go on there. So it could be five, five, ten up or whatever they say these days. So, so turn him off. Uh, the two buttons below that are the uh, clarifier. One's the receive clarifier. Um, you've got a little clarifier at the side here. Get clarifier receive comes up on the display and it's the back multifunction VFO control that changes that. Okay, so that's the receive clarifier. Turn him off. If I do the TX1, um, it's now just saying the TX is going to be different. That's a standard one that you would get. The RIT on ICOM radios, same thing. And clarifier on Yesu. So uh, if you have both, you get both the receive. It says here clarifier, TX and RX. Good. Okay. And at the moment, I've now, although I've got it on there, there's a button to the left of the, um, the uh, variable function VFO. I've turned that off. I've turned it back on. And now they go both together again. Okay, so turn him off. That's good. So then what we have is uh, volume control. Uh, the top one here, again, it's in blue. So you know it's for the sub. Um, the outer control is for the RF gain stroke uh, squelch, depending on how you've got it set up in the menu system. And the top one is the sub volume control. If you don't have the uh, re sub receiver turned on you don't get anything there okay so that's how it's um, you've got the normal fast and lock buttons down here fast for fast tuning and the lock button to lock up the whole of the display uh, the lower control again is for the main receiver it's the main AF which is there and the RF gain stroke squelch on that and the the nice touch about this I think Martin said one in one of his videos that they've gone back to some of the older FT101 style knobs uh, where they have a little lever a little modification to it on the um, uh, the um, the actual control itself it looks very 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 nice indeed and one thing I have noticed about the the controls on this although they are sort of plastic these days they're actually very good quality uh, some of the radios that we're getting through when you look at them they, even though they're, they're nice to look at but they are a little bit loose and wobbly and the plastic doesn't feel that good on this radio they are actually very nicely made indeed okay so onwards um, what we have now uh, so we've got the volume going there we had the main receiver button selectable from there the sub receiver on that one there okay so leave it like that for a minute. We do have both going on. This actually determines what, when you're changing the VFO, which one changes. So if I do this, you can see that this one is uh, tuning quite nicely. If I go to the sub receiver, now you can see the sub receiver tuning. Okay. And again, uh, it depends on what you have this uh, revert, what is it? The, the rear multifunction VFO control, some weird acronym that they've used. But um, it's it, one thing I really like about this radio, actually, is how smooth the main VFO is. It is beautiful. Um, it's nice and solid, but it's so smooth, as is the back one. It's really, really nice indeed. So that's the VFO. You can actually see up here, I said earlier, you've got the, the selectable between main and sub. And as I said, sub being blue, main being white. You can see a little arrow on the top here, top of the VFO. That changes colour to uh, donate denote denote donate uh, Martin would like donations I know I'm sure uh, <laughs> uh, denote which what you're going to be changing so if we have it on main we're going to be changing the main VFO here so um, the next 
uh, where are we? Yes, so down this side here we've got the clarify button which I explained to you just a second ago. Another little blue button here is your quick memory bank button and then if you want to below that if you can see it is the fine tuning button and that allows you if you select that that now allows you to chain, uh, tune in hertz rather than uh, tens of hertz and so, uh, so on. So. On the other side, uh, I'm going to have to stretch a little bit here, we've got a couple of little buttons. The top one is uh, VC Tune. Um, this radio actually has microtune units uh, in it. With the, it comes with standard on the main. Um, it's like the roofing filters if you want. Um, uh, the sub one is also an optional extra which you can have and you just, to enable that, you put that. That now is enabled, if you look on the main VFO, you'll see along the top there's a way of tuning the actual um, roofing filter stroke uh, microtune unit to get idea. Let's turn the volume up. You might be able to get an idea of what it goes sounds like. So you can see it goes nice and quiet. One, one end, and then when you get back to the centre where you're you want to be, you get just there is about right, and then it goes off the other side again. Okay. So and you get the same one to for the sub receiver if we had it installed on this. Uh, down the other, other side you've got two other buttons, uh, one is the uh, user programmable um, customer select I think they call it, consumer select. You can hit that and you can program it to do various things, you know, you want to change power level very quickly and uh, you just press that, turn the knob and away you go. Um, and then you have the last one there is the main and sub and that if you, it comes on by default, now what you have is the back multi VFO control does the sub receiver and the main VFO does the uh, the main receiver obviously so turn that off and turn that off okay <clears throat> so just a few more little things to go and then I'm gonna have a little break for a second and we we'll then concentrate on the actual frequency display itself over here what we have on the top we have the mic speed uh, stroke processor level and to that's the in and um, the smaller diameter taller knob if you like that will actually change the CW speed if we're in CW mode and you can uh, still CW speed if I'm going into SSB mode for instance and change that we're going to do the mic gain if I press it now we've got the compression uh, that's also the um, that's the processor level on that one now when the light comes on um, and the outer one is the processor. It's got an automatic mic gain control, AMC out on this thing, to stop you overdriving it if you ever um, sort of uh, worry about things like that. So, and then you've got the pitch. Uh, where is it? Oh, Kia's not there because we haven't got the Kia switched on. Ah, oh, idiot. Stupid boy. Um, Below that we have the various memory functions here, then this little row here. So you've got VFO stroke memory. We're in VFO mode on both at the moment. If you press that, we've got memory 01 um, and so on. We've only got one memory program down there, so I can't change them around. You have, if you want to transpose your memory to your VFO, we've already got it set to seven megs and it's the other way around, the VFO to memory. Standard buttons on most Yesu uh, equipment. Uh, below that we've got these four, four controls that I mentioned earlier on. So the top two are in blue, so they relate to the sub-receiver. The, the lower ones are in white and they relate to the main receiver. Okay, so you've got noise blanker, dynamic noise reduction, uh, dynamic notch filter. And again then underneath that you've got the control which does the IF shift and width. Okay, so you can see all the the um, details coming up on the display there. Um, over here you have the notch itself, if you put the enable the notch um, we can see we can manually enter the notch and you get a little, uh, where is it, the, there's a little indicator there that it's on the sub receiver and we can tune it into our frequency that we want to try and notch out. Again if you're going to do contour uh, you press the contour button and you can see the appropriate frequencies changing there. Audio peak frequency is there as well. So again, top controls all do to do with the sub receiver, bottom controls all to do with the main receiver. So what we're going to do now is just have a, a slight break and then we're going to come back and I'm going to go over some of the uh, display functionality and some of the menu options for you. Okay, thank you very much.